resistances are connected like these this kind of a combination is called as series combination of course you know that one end is common between all these so this is uh, like just by go on adding like this all right so this is how a series combination looks like first of all and i'm sure that since you have been studying the series combination from the beginning itself from uh, maybe probably you have seen it for the first time in your 10th standard i think so you know what it means now if let us say i amount of current is flowing through the same current will flow through each of the resistances so what is main important point in a series combination the current flowing through each of the resistance in a series combination is going to remain the same so when resistances are connected in series the current flowing through each of the resistances is going to be exactly the same no problem what about potential difference let us say potential difference across the first one is v1 let's say the first resistance is r1 this is r2 this is r3 the potential difference across this is going to be v2 and the potential difference across this is going to be v3 all right now we know that the current is same and we know the value of v1 is going to be equal to i times r1 we know that v1 is going to be equal to i times r1 we know v2 is going to be equal to i times r2 and we know v3 is going to be equal to i times r3 correct okay now if i say that even the resistances are same the potential drop across each of the resistors is also going to be same okay so that's a specific uh, type of a series combination where even if the resistances are given as same then we can say that yes the potential drop across each of these resistances are also going to be the same but not in every case what we can say confidently about every case is that the current is going to be same in case of a series combination now if you start off with kirchhoff's rule and if i say the potential difference across the battery let us say the terminals of the battery is v and okay so if i say that okay this terminal is at v and this is at zero so well this will become v this will become zero no problem okay so what we can write if you if you just take this circuit and write the kirchhoff's formula of or you apply the kirchhoff's voltage rule so if i start let us say from this side let us say from this point i start like this what do i encounter first the negative terminal so i write it as plus v as i go ahead i see the first resistance and obviously as i am moving in this direction which is the same direction as that of the current so i have to write it as minus so minus ir1 or let me write it as minus v1 first minus v1 minus v2 minus v3 should be equal to zero because i am talking about this entire closed loop okay all right this is how we are moving in the loop cool we started from this point let's call this point as a and we are coming back to point a okay is that okay fine so if i'm moving okay let me just write that also so this is a this is b this is let us say c this is d so we are moving across a b c d back to a no problem okay so because we know that in a loop delta v should be equal to 0 what do we get from here v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 correct okay easy v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 perfect and the value of v1 is ir1 the value of v2 is ir2 and the value of v3 is ir3 so this is what you have to remember the same current flows through the resistors and across any resistor if you want to write the potential difference well that is going to be ir1 or ir2 and depends upon how many resistors are given so in a series combination of course by using kvl you can write a v is equal to v1 plus v2 and so on and if we are saying that if i replace all these three resistances with one single resistance and we are calling that resistance as r equivalent okay what will be the value of this r equivalent right so what will be the value of this r equivalent we go from this formula itself that what we had got v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 let's start from here so what i can write if i replace all of them with just one single resistance and i'm calling this resistance as r equivalent what i'm going to get for this one v is going to be equal to i times of r equivalent v1 is equal to i times of r1 v2 is going to be equal to i times of r2 and v3 is going to be equal to i times of r3 
So all this i you can take it as common and you can cancel. So what do you get for r equivalent? r equivalent in series is r1 plus r2 plus r3 and if there are more so on. So this is the final formula for the equivalent resistance when there are r1, r2, r3 all these resistances are in a series combination. No problem. So what do we get for r equivalent? Very simply, we get R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 up to R. Okay, easy. Did you understand? Fine. All right. Now, if there are n number of resistances which are connected in series and each of them are having equal value of the resistance, then the total value, the net summation, because then you are going to write R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 up to Rn, right? And if all of these, each individual resistance are equal, and let us say equal to R, what you get? N times of R in case of equal resistances, no problem. So just a, a kind of shortcut formula, you can say that if you see, let us say 5 ohm, 5 ohm, 5 ohm, 5 ohm connected across a series, right? You can directly either add them or you can see that how many times it is being repeated N times of that resistance, that's it. If all of them are equal. Cool with this? Series combination, very simple formula of resistance, R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 and just go on writing it, okay?